Hi, I'm David Fetter, Executive Editor of Technical for Prepared Foods. Welcome you to another Prepared Foods Network presentation. The catalyst for the recent tsunami of consumer interest in digestive health and immunity might have all but faded away, but the interest itself has not. And while American culture was late to the probiotic culture party, the events of the past few years have sealed cultured dairy in the minds of domestic consumers as the primary method of attaining a healthy gut microbiome. We've asked Dr. Miguel Freitas, nutrition scientist and probiotics researcher and the VP of Health and Scientific Affairs for Danone North America, to catch us up on what the next steps for cultured dairy and dairy analogs are as they keep pace with this big demand for more and better cultured food and beverage products, all to keep our GI tracts on track. Welcome, Dr. Freitas. Hi, David. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. Um, we've watched as gut health has taken off in recent years with special emphasis on immunity, um, but gut health also has been connected with support against just a wealth of other diseases and dysfunctions. So uh, what are the very latest and unexpected advances in our knowledge of gut health? You know, David, gut health is really a major focus uh, for American consumers. In fact, many are citing gut health as the number one most important aspect of their overall health. And that makes sense, given that we're seeing also uh, the research field evolving very much when it comes to gut health and the microbiome. And this is suggesting that the impact of gut health, specifically on the gut microbiome, is incredibly far-reaching. So while the focus primarily is on benefits around digestive and immune system, as you mentioned, evidence is also indicating that the gut is connecting to other functions of the body, such as our mouth, our lungs, and even our skin. And most recently, newer studies even suggest that the gut and certain probiotics, which I'm sure we're going to talk about, could help improve mental well-being, cognitive health, and even sleep quality, so-called gut-brain access or the gut-brain connection. Uh, a lot more is needed to understand fully this and to have a definitive connection, but uh, a lot is happening in terms of gut microbiome and many other functions in our body. Well, so well, let's get a bit specific on Danone. What are the advances that are coming down the pipeline in regards to R&D and culture dairy and dairy analogs um, as far as enhanced digestive health support is concerned? Well, uh, there's a lot of advances that, that are coming out uh, currently when it comes to um, gut microbiome. I would say that uh, a lot is focusing on really understanding the microbiome itself. The more we can learn about the microbiome, the more we can use this research to help people achieve a better health. We know that each one of us has a unique microbiome. I typically say it's just like our fingerprints, uh, they're unique. And that's why when it comes to developing a product, and even at the known, we're not only looking at products that can help restore the microbiome or the microbiota of uh, anyone in dysbiosis. And by dysbiosis, I mean when somebody has an unbalanced microbiome, for example, given consumption of uh, antibiotics, but we're also looking at products that can nourish the good bacteria in our gut and ultimately support gut health in general. And this can be achieved with certain probiotics, but also with certain prebiotics. In addition, uh, today, the technologies that we have allow us to incorporate some of these probiotics and prebiotics, both in dairy and dairy analogs. Uh, I'm guessing by dairy analogs, you mean, for example, dairy alternatives, uh, beverages that are made with plant protein, so right. we know that today we're able to do that even when fermentation is required. Oh, wow. So um, can you share with us the foods or ingredients or uh, other uh, ingredients and such that product developers should be thinking of for improved gut health um, that might go beyond uh, probiotics and prebiotics? Yeah, there's, there's, there's other things around biotics in general. Uh, that we're starting to understand. So the research in biotics, in the biotic space, 
is definitely evolving outside of the pro and pre to also consider things like postbiotics, and that's really a, a most a, the most recent uh, biotic uh, trend in terms of, of research. And postbiotics uh, can be defined as a preparation of inanimate microorganisms or what they produce during a fermentation process that confers a health benefit on the host. For example, some of these uh, components can include metabolites like certain short chain fatty acids, which are very important for gut health, certain enzymes, or even certain vitamins. So the research in this area is still quite new, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we need to watch uh, very closely as we continue to learn uh, more about leveraging bi biotics uh, for health uh, in general. And I would like to give you an example of a very recent cutting edge research that was done at Danone. Uh, we developed uh, an infant formula that includes postbiotics that are named uh, 3GL, which is also a human milk oligosaccharide. So I don't know how familiar you are with uh, breast milk substitutes or infant formula, but HMOs or human milk oligosaccharides uh, are very important uh, when it comes to uh, infant feeding if uh, the baby is uh, fed by infant formula. And these particular ones are produced during the fermentation of two bacteria. One is a Bifidobacterium brevae, and the other one is a Streptococcus germophilus. So the presence of these specific HMOs that can also be called a postbiotic because they are produced by bacteria and they are inanimate and they confer a health benefit, um, really helps to contribute to the biodiversity of HMOs provided to the infant, which is critical, again, in the case the baby is being fed with infant formula. Absolutely. That's uh, starting from the cradle. That's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I'm guessing there are also certain ingredients that product developers um, should be taking better advantage of for use in foods and beverages um, that they might not uh, be using currently, um, but could easily be included. Um, any any light to shine on that? Sure, we we talk a lot about probiotics, of course, and I think that's uh, the most popular and where research has most advanced. And actually, on probiotics, if you don't mind, I wanted to make a, a clarification that is really important for product developers. Uh, and I think whenever a product developer is looking to leverage the benefits of probiotics, they should focus on specific frames. And for me, this is really important because there's a common misconception that all fermented foods that contain any life and active cultures also provide probiotics. And that's not necessarily true. So in order to qualify as a probiotic or a true probiotic, a particular microorganism must be studied in a clinical setting and found to have a specific health benefit. And that should go back to the strain level of the bacteria. Now, to oh, go back to your, yeah. No, I was going to say that that's interesting because uh, you know we tend to think of these cultures uh, or bacteria themselves. We're, we always hear them in terms of beneficial bacteria and harmful bacteria, but it sounds like you're talking about the whole category of neutral bacteria that they're not doing any harm, but they might not be doing any good. Is that correct? Yes, and we might not know what they're doing. And that's why oh, understanding the microbiome is very important. Um, very recently, we're, there's a bacteria called Archimensia, which has been in our guts forever. We didn't really know uh, the effects that it had, beneficial or not. But now we're starting to understand that in people where this bacteria is present and tend to be more lean than... Uh, than in people where bacteria is, this bacteria is not present. So as we continue to understand the microbiome, we start to understand better the effects of different bacteria. But again, I think we should always go back to the strain level. It's not enough to say this product contains 10 billion lactobacillus considered a probiotic. You really have to explain what type of lactobacillus. Is it lactobacillus casei? And specifically, what strain of lactobacillus? 
I typically say, David, uh, that you know the outbreaks of E. coli, right? Everybody knows E. coli. Yeah, absolutely. But E. coli is one of the most abundant species of bacteria in our gut. But there's particular strains of E. coli that can do a lot of harm in your gut, and those are associated to strains. So again, both in the in the bad and in the good we need to go back to the strain level. That's really important. Uh, and to, to answer your, your initial question about um, other ingredients, uh, so we talk a lot about probiotics, but um, maybe we don't talk enough about prebiotics. And I think prebiotics are also an essential component of gut health and one that works very well in a variety of foods and beverage formats. Uh, so prebiotics typically or naturally appear in foods such as artichokes, uh, asparagus, onions, garlic, and certain oats and even soybeans, but they can be used in concentrated forms such as uh, isolated inulin to fortify certain foods and beverages. And typically the doses needed in a product to provide the, to provide a beneficial effect on gut health are around five grams per day. And like to give you a couple of examples from the known, so we use prebiotics in some of our yogurts, including Activia, but also in some of our happy family toddler foods and infant formulas. And the goal is, is to provide, uh, of course, a gut health benefit and mainly through the diffidogenic effect of the prebiotics, which means these prebiotics can help increase the population of diffidobacterium in the gut, which is important for gut health. Right, exactly. And um, I mean, it, it took Americans several decades to catch up to Europe and Asia in recognizing the importance of gut health. And yeah, there's no question that uh, Danone and Activia uh, with a lot of help from Jamie Lee Curtis, put it on the map. I mean, that really was a major tipping point that got Americans involved in understanding and recognizing gut health and cultured dairy. Um, we went from a non-yogurt eating culture to, no pun intended, to a yogurt eating culture almost overnight because of that. Um, so where is the rest of the world now and where is the U.S. not? What do we have to catch up to now? Right. You're, you're, you're sorry, you're, you're right. Uh, well, I, I, I finished my PhD in 2001 uh, in Europe and I did study probiotics at that time already. And uh, when I uh, was lucky to move to the United States with the known in 2004, the American, so almost... 20 years ago, right? The American understanding of gut health and good bacteria was very, very limited, David. Uh, misconception regarding uh, all the antibacterial products and the sterile environments had always been preferred uh, in the world of food science and even in the world of medicine. And uh, it was complicated because I had just embarked on this research journey that I was trying to prove quite the opposite, that bacteria can be good for you. And uh, well, again, you're right, with the launch of Activia in 2006, Anon was able to change considerably the narrative uh, around gut health and bacteria and showcase just how good bacteria can really be good for, for gut health. Right, right. So. Um, I, I think we've, you know, we've, we've come a long way and the, the knowledge that the average consumer has now regarding gut health is, uh, like I said, we, I think we've passed the tipping point and we are now a, a community, at least here, you know, in the U.S., that is very eager to, uh, to, to be more involved with our, um, our, our microbiomes, get to know our microbiomes. Um, let's uh, close, we're running out of time, but let's close with some trends and coming concepts or technology that you can share with our audience um, and you know on, on things uh, that you'd like to see done differently when it comes to promoting cultured dairy and gut health in general. Sure, David. Just 
briefly going back to your some of your previous comments, you're right. I think we are in a very different situation today when it comes to acceptance of bacteria, gut health, and I'm really happy that we are at that place today. And I think uh, they um, did have a big role to play there. Uh, in terms of trends uh, in the past decade, there's been uh, a huge increase of new tools such as DNA and RNA sequencing and metabolomics and neurobiology, which I even used uh, a while back, as well as in vitro gut models that allow us to better explore uh, what happens, the molecular events linking gut microbes to health including the effects of probiotics. So these, these new techniques, uh, to my point of view, will really allow us to uh, select uh, new biotics in general. So I, I usually use this term of biotics that uh, includes pre, pro, and post. And these new techniques uh, will definitely allow us to select new biotics based on, on the potential benefits to the gut microbiome or the gut microbiota. And in the case of gut health and study of the microbiome, the more we learn and the more we disrupt, I think the more health knowledge the public will also have around this important topic. It, it, it is. And um, as you pointed out, with the science just disclosing more and more and more that, uh, uh, that connects our uh, our. our our, uh, what do you call, uh, our residents, uh, all those, you know, trillions of bacteria and, you know, how they help us, um, their host. Uh, it, it's just, um, it, it's fascinating, but I, I, th I think there's just still a whole lot more to discover. And I look forward to um, having you back uh, soon so that you can tell us what's new and what, you know, what, what's been discovered since we've had this chat today. Um, but yeah, we're out of time. I know there's a lot more that you can share with us on this topic. So for sure, uh, let's have you back. Um, I also want to thank our audience for joining us. Um, I know we couldn't cover everything here, of course. Um, if you head to our website, uh, preparefoods.com, you'll find just a number of articles addressing gut health, immunity, pre, post, symbiotics, um, and uh, everything that product developers, manufacturers need to um, get involved with helping consumers build a healthy gut microbiome. Uh, again, I'm David Fetter, Executive Editor Technical for Prepared Foods Media, and this was a sit-down chat with Dr. Miguel Freitas, nutrition scientist and probiotics researcher, and of course, VP of Health and Scientific Affairs for Danone North America. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Until next time.